This is Anna Jacobs, Lindsay Warren, and Daniel Stevens presenting Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola Bottling Company had an unusual start. It began with a pharmacist in Atlanta, Georgia, creating a unique serum, which he sold and it soon gained rapid popularity. Two brothers out of Chattanooga, Tennessee heard about the product and paid a visit to the pharmacist. The brothers were wanting to buy the rights to the bottle and company, in which the pharmacist saw as a idiotic idea, so he sold the rights to them for one dollar with a fixed price of 50 cents per bottle. In 1902, J.B. Harrison began the first Coca-Cola bottling company in Gainesboro, Greensboro, North Carolina. Eighteen years later, Coca-Cola bottling had huge success and gained the namesake of Coke as their trademark. Soon success grew more with the company because its focus was on family as well as veterans. In the early 1950s, the introduction of different size bottles as well as canned drinks were stars in the marketplace. In 1990, the introduction of Dasani water came to the bottling company, which made the first of its kind, and in 2002 was the 100th anniversary. In 2010, marked Coca-Cola's bottling company's success by being the largest independent bottler. Today, Coca-Cola bottling is far more than soft drinks. This company makes, packages, and transports soft drinks to stores, eateries, offices, and college campuses. Coca-Cola bottling is the nation's largest independent Coca-Cola bottling bottler, which strives to lead and gain a personal relationship with their clients. As a company, they are focused on sticking to their motto, to God and to honor God in all we do, and as well as keep family values important influences in their company along with the interactions with the clients. Coca-Cola Bottling as a company employs broad differentiation strategy. First, broad differentiation is a company seeks to become different in a company's products offering competitors in ways that appeal to a broad range of buyers. The type of competitive advantage that is pursued by Coca-Cola Bottling was differentiation rather than lower costs, and the type of market is wide buyer segment. The evidence that supports the broad differentiation strategy in Coca-Cola is that they focus on taste preference. Due to the various people as well as countries, Coca-Cola bottling focus on products in one category which ranges from sodas as well as water, juice, energy drinks, and coffee products. As a result, Coca-Cola bottling distributes many products as well as products in other categories like energy, energy drinks and even milk. These are our driving forces, and this is the external part of the analysis. The first one we have are health concerns. After decades of increasing, the, nas the national childhood obesity rate has leveled off, and the rise of obesity among adults is beginning to slow. It's still one of the biggest threats to the health of our children in our country, putting millions of Americans at risk for chronic diseases and contributing to more than $147 billion to $210 billion in preventable health care spending. According to hsph.harvard.edu, soft drinks and other sugary drinks are partly to blame. Two out of three adults and one out of three children in the U.S. are overweight or obese. Rising consumption of sugary drinks has been a major contributor to the obesity epidemic. A 20 ounce soda is said to contain 15 to 18 teaspoons of sugar and upwards of 240 calories. A myriad of articles similar to these and scientific studies have been released and now many more consumers are becoming more health, con health conscious. Next we have our substitutes. With health concerns becoming a big issue comes the threat of substitutes. Substitutes are already a high threat within the industry. However, the growth of healthy eating movements have helped to increase the threat even more. Because consumers are more health conscious, health conscious um, they will try to avoid and will likely be to avoid soft drinks and will likely be consuming other drinks such as water, tea, juice, and milk. Um, one huge trend in this day and age is juice. Juicing and going to juice bars is becoming the new morning coffee stop and it's also very healthy for consumers. Next we have innovation. Innovation in an industry where growth is, grown, is so very slow, one thing that Coke needs to be on top of is innovation. And while there are very few other soft drink manufacturers and distributors within the industry, they should continue to innovate as much as possible to keep their consumers interested. 
Ways they could innovate would be working with younger generations, such as millennials, to come up with new marketing campaigns to keep consumers interested. Uh, next, we have the green movement. Going green is extremely important to, to consumers. In the soft drink industry, it's a necessity for success. In order to keep up their image, the manufacturers and bottlers not, not only need to be able to meet standards that are mandated, they need to try and be better. Working to conserve and recycle water as well as recycle plastic from bottles previously used and cut down on waste is also very important. Companies like Coke cannot simply be socially responsive. They have to be socially responsible. And this is how they'll succeed and win the green consumers. Next we have our key success factors and this is the internal part of the analysis. First we have marketing which is keeping their brand fresh within consumers minds. Um, according to Coke, they bring to life an integrated comprehensive marketing plan backed by a global brand, a culture of innovation, and a history of building successful relationships. Coming up with com commercials and signs with catchy tunes and phrases is one reason Coke is so successful and well known in their industry. Another would be their brand recognition. When a consumer thinks of Coke, they usually probably think of red or a polar bear. These are the things that, Coke, or that consumers associate with Coke. The re this is another reason they're so successful, because being recognizable is vital to their success. Another would be sustainability. Um, they're very serious when it comes to protecting the planet. They're very involved in the conservation of water, wildlife, diversity, and recycling. Their plants far exceed industry standards for water con conservation. Not only do they reduce water use in their plants, but they also recycle wastewater from manufacturing processes and adhere to stringent quality standards according to coconsolidated.com. They also preserve to protect they also protect wildlife by partnering with World Wildlife Fund to um, come up with more sustainable water practices. They also have a recycling win program, which is where consumers can partner with local governments and businesses to recycle and this has brought measurable recycling, recycling rate increases. Next we have the brand image. Coca-Cola is known for being socially responsible because they're very involved in the green mov movement explained above. They're also very active within the community, sponsoring local youth programs such as YMCA's, educational and recreational programs at schools and colleges, and they give scholarships. They also frequently volunteer at places such as hospitals, hospices, and homeless shelters. They do this, and not only is it good because they're helping their community, they're also helping themselves to, con to succeed as a company. Uh, for our strength that we saw for the company is that is Coca-Cola Consolidated is the largest independent Coca-Cola bottle in the United States. For one of our weaknesses we saw is that they're having trouble hiring millennials. Um, our main opportunity we see for the company is the Coke Cares Project. They continue to reach out to nonprofit organizations to help improve their image in the community. And then our major threat for the company is the rising cost of, of raw materials. They have a steady rise since 2000. I believe it was around 117% increase. When you take a look at their financial statements, they have shown consistent growth in revenue over the past four years. They recently in 2012 started about $1.6 billion, and they grew to over $2.3 billion. When you look at their gross profit margins and net profit margin and operating profit margin, this is more concerning. They have become very stagnant. Their gross profit margin was actually 41% in 2012 and it dropped down to 2% by 2015. And then their ROE started in 2012 around 20%. It ended up drop, taking a little bit of a drop in 2013 to around 14%. But it's consistently grown since then, jumping up to 17% and then 24% in 2015. One concern that we have for Coca-Cola Bottling Company would be their lack of millennials within the company. The question here is how do you obtain millennials to work for your company? Another concern we would have is uh, continual growth while maintaining culture. A third concern that we have is the stagnant profit margin. The gross profit margin declined by 2% from 2012 to 2015. Operating profit margin and net profit margin both declined by 1% within this span. A fourth concern we have is the pricing that's controlled by Coca-Cola Manufacturing Company. And the last concern that we have would be the government restrictions by the Food and Drug Administration. They're constantly changing and these restrictions are concerning, are concerning health related issues. 
Our first suggestion or first recommendation for the company is to hire a small number of millennials. By doing this, we would we would put the the millennials that we hired with a small group of seasoned employees and try to figure out a way to bring more millennials into the company. Uh, this will give the company a fresh and new outlook in order to obtain even more millennials. Um, our second recommendation is we suggested the Coca-Cola bottling company work with Coca-Cola manufacturer to come up with a more flexible price plan that will allow profit growth. Um, this would cover pricing and stagnant profit margin concerns. This would also help millennials and culture concern. Our last recommendation is that the bottling and distribution plants within the state, within the states where the restrictions and regulations are more heavily monitored, to focus more on water, milk, and tea distributions, and less on soda and energy drinks. Mm -hmm. Within these areas, soft drinks and energy drinks are heavily taxed and more very restricted, and they are not as popular with co consumers because they are more health conscious. This would this would cover the strict FDA regulations.